the fourth race to the altar commenced with the interview segment. This segment saw 15 couples being interviewed in hopes of making it to the final. However, only five could have been selected, and these are the couples who impressed the judges in this segment. Let us meet the five couples. Our first couple is Hamilton Holder, 31, and Karen McAllister, 30. This couple met in 2007 at Border Market while she was shopping. She came to buy a whole year's night dress for the church. I tried convincing her to buy one for me and she refused. So I had to walk the whole of Border Market just to get one for her. Yeah. And from then on, it's it pissy. Hamilton proposed on January 6, 2013. Hamilton and Karen say they always try to pray together because they believe that the family that prays together stays together. They also believe that communication, honesty, trust, and love are key in a marriage. Couple number two is Clay Harris, 26, and Malaysia Kelman, 23. This couple met on their first day at the Government Technical Institute on September 2, 2009. I was standing by the classroom door. I had my notebook in my hand because I'm a personal lecturer. I write a little bit about myself. I came out of the blue, collect the book, uh -huh. read what I have to write, what I had. Turn the page, you write his name, his address, telephone number. He's a serious name. man. <laughs> and then you write at the bottom, be with me the risk. On March 8, 2015, Clay proposed at church using a PowerPoint presentation professing his love for her. To this couple, there is no one formula for a successful marriage, but they believe in communication and finding solutions for difficulties in the marriage. They also believe there must be a spiritual foundation. Lucky couple number three is Stephen Prasad, 32, and Mona Lisa Sami, 28. This couple met through a friend via Blackberry Messenger. They exchanged messages and continued communicating through Facebook until they agreed to meet. One night I was on Facebook, I was chatting with my friend, and she said, Stephen said to tell you hi, and I said, how are you getting contact with him, because I know he left for a vacation. She said, he's he on a vacation right now, and he's leaving to go to another country tomorrow, so you can go add him, but I think he's a bit tired, he wouldn't confirm you now. So I add him, and from the moment I add him, um, we started to communicate a lot on Facebook. Stephen proposed on January 2, 2016. They believe that the most important discipline for a successful marriage is to love and respect each other. They are Christians and they plan to have God at the center of their relationship and to be guided by the principles set out in the Bible. Couple number four is Troy Archer, 34, and Karen Alexander, 27. This couple met 11 years ago in a minibus. I was very young, I was 16, still mm -hmm. in school, and very immature, I had no previous relationship and so on. So he, Troy, would have been my first relationship. Uh, when I came in, was I was trying to get home because it was in the afternoon, and um, I didn't want to get home late, mm -hmm. get in trouble. And um, so I, I joined the bus. He was already in the bus, and I sat in the back seat. So when I came in, I look at him. He seemed pleasant, seemed nice, very quiet, uh, sweet boy, tidy in in the tidy form. Um, I was like, he seemed nice, I'd like to get to know him, but not intentionally like as a boyfriend, but just like a friend. And um, there was somebody sitting next to me in the back seat. They, I was the last person to enter the back seat. And I wanted to get Troy's attention, so I started talking to the person next to me. <laughs> but it seemed as if he wasn't even paying attention to me. So I, I talked to the person, we talked a little, uh, we exchanged numbers. And I... I was approaching my sub, so I came out of the bus, and I looked at him and smiled, and then the bus dro drove up, so like, fine, whatever. You flirt with him. You look at him and give me a little yeah, flirt. I, I look at him and I smile, and the bus drive up, so I thought that was it. I and I crossed the, the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, cr I like crossed the road, and um, I heard him shouting, and I turned around, and it was him, and stopped the bus, and he came running. We exchanged number. I told him, you can't, you can't follow me home because I'm going to get in trouble. On April 8, 2006, Troy proposed to Karen, but due to financial constraints, a wedding has not yet been possible. The couple has two children and a third on the way. For them, marriage means love, trust, understanding, and sometimes compromise. 
And finally, lucky couple number five is Eldon Pyle, 24, and Matola Caesar, 21. This couple met on March Day of 2011. From the moment Matola saw Eldon, she fell in love with him. This relationship was very interesting um, because she was always young. <laughs> and I used to like um, go out to parties and shows and so. And I used to go, go to the family and ask um, if she could go out with me and everything. And this is how we started going out. Um, different shows and so. Two years later, Eldon proposed. This couple has a two month old daughter. They believe in commitment, communication, and knowledge for a longer-lasting and successful marriage. The five couples were given the opportunity to spend a day at the Arrow Point Resort. While it was a day of fun for the couples, they were also being judged almost every step of the way. The journey began at Rurama Residence Inn, where the couples boarded a bus and headed up the east bank of Demerara to Tamiri, where they boarded two boats and headed up the Kamuni River to Arrow Point. On their arrival, Captain Gerald Govias spoke to the participants on the resort grounds, where he tested their knowledge of the local indigenous culture and about Guyana's tourism product. You know, each one of y'all, there was a reason y'all get picked, you know. People had to fit three criteria. But I'm not going to tell you that now. I can tell you that this afternoon. Because after you pass through that first stage, which is a shortlisted down to five, then we still got to pick one of y'all as a lucky couple who, um, who will benefit from the Wedding Expo uh, generosity. First of all, how many of you have ever gone into the jungle before? Put up your hand. Who have never gone into the jungle? All right. <laughs> you don't worry. This resort is owned by Roraima, but it is on Amerindian lands, um, and so it is leased from the Armenian village and um, and the Armenian village and the people of this village is paid for um, for everything that goes on here so they, we, they there's a lease for the land there's a lease for every every building in this land every person that comes to this resort um, there's a tax that goes to the to the community and so on the couples trekked the jungle with tour guide Edward and there were stops along the way where the guide explained interesting things about the jungle the couples also got an opportunity to climb the hunter's platform. And then it was time for the kayaking. This part of the competition placed each couple in a kayak with paddles to journey back to the resort through Alligator Creek. To keep up with the couples, myself and cameraman Kareem also boarded the kayak. And after the kayaking, Captain Govaya sat down with the couples to find out a little more about them and find out why they think they deserve to win the competition. Hey Guyana, it's your girl Karen McAllister and Okay, being at Arapon today has helped us to know more about Guyana and all that Guyana has to offer. We are couple number one and we look forward for you voting for us guys. We've been together for eight years and we have been engaged for three years. Looking forward to you voting for us. Thank you. Uh, it was really good, first of all, working with the couples and being around them, it was really good. Um, the, the atmosphere was hospitable, um, going through the, the trail for, um, uh, for the kayaking, you call it. Um, that was really good. I basically learned how to paddle. <laughs> and it, it's not so easy as it seems. It's an art and it's a skill. Um, the mountain, um, riding through the mountain, that was really good. I enjoyed that. We had a really good time really enjoying ourselves and so um, we're looking to win this thing so vote for us um, we would appreciate that but everybody was having fun in my opinion everybody was having fun they, everybody else they're really nice people after, once you get to know them after you have gotten to know them are you more confident now and less confident that okay I'm gonna win this thing well it's a godly thing in life they say woe for you for you well, for me, could never be for you. So it's hopefully. So who should people vote for? Well, I wish you them vote for me. <laughs> I know the Father in heaven knows that we deserve it. During the race to the altar, the couples allowed our cameras into their homes to capture the essence of what home life is like for them. Here's our visit to couple number one, Hamilton Holder and Karen McAllister. But I, I'm here with my family here, and I 
And I appreciate that the offer that they give us and most of it of it. Eh? My wife would like to explain more the rest to you, you know. She she's a very good talker, you know. I'm not much married much words, you know. Okay, Karen, <laughs> tell us about home life. Good evening. Home life is home life is really nice because you know when you're off on your own, you know, you get to do things your way, like in planning how to fix the house, what you have to get, what is necessary, your needs basically, you know, not your wants but your needs and you know you get your privacy basically. So home life is really nice, you know. No complaints. I can tell you come the 14th of february at the duke lodge it will be a beyonce show off <laughs> you know that is a that is a promise i make to you guyana no ifs nor buts nor maybe this is the real deal our visit to couple number two took us to underneaving on the west bank of demerara um, i think that we live like if we are married because the only thing is the uh the act or you know the ceremony um because the marriage act is just an act but the life is what matters and i think that you know we're living the life as it is together um we consult with finances together um savings together school work together everything we basically do together if it's more than us we basically have the guidance of her father and her mom even my dad and my mom although they're not in the country so um i think it's like if we're married it's just that you know we haven't performed the ceremonial processes yet um there is a home already there that's um where we bought our start up as in terms of our kitchen like our stove we have a six burner stove uh a washing machine and microwave and the kitchen is already set right and everything is there just waiting for us to basically move in there <laughs> the only thing we have to deal with is the front like television she have a room i have my room i'm coming with a well-stocked room she's coming with a good room um but the kitchen is already set we have our pot set everything even to a greater <laughs> as minus that we have that we then visited Stephen Prasad's home where he lives with his parents. His fiancée, Mona Lisa Sami, who is a frequent visitor to the home, was there as well. It's good. She grew in well with the family. <laughs> yeah. Um, everybody likes her. And um, she's blending in nice, even with the neighbors too. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you enjoy most about coming here? Oh, um, they're very wonderful, they're lovely, they're a loving family, and I enjoy the company, and um, they're more spiritual, so I'm growing into that spiritual aspect of it too. I just got my house plan, so I will be embarking on the building project, so I got my land already, so I should be building soon. Our visit to couple number four took us to paradise on the east coast of Demerara. What's a typical day like for you as a family? Um, the mornings are hectic because Tristan, he got to go to school. So we get up like he gets up at 5.30, I get up at 6. Um, he go clean the car. And for me, I start um, preparing his lunch, his Tristan's lunch and breakfast and so on. Then um, they get up around 6.30, minutes to 7. Um, I bathe them, brush their teeth. By that time, he is finished with the car. It comes in, and then um, I usually press every morning as well. Okay. School goes and so. Well, for me, I like helping out in all the fields, even in the kitchen, even with the clothes, bathing the kids at time, taking them to school, make sure you reach on time, bring you back home. Mm -hmm. That's me. As you could see, just now I was preparing tea for both of them. Okay. Well, under this condition, even in the condition, out of the condition, I is the one that was get up all through the night and make sure they get them tea at mm -hmm. night. I love doing it. And the visit to our final couple, couple number five, took us to Kitty, where we met Eldon Pyle and Mutola Caesar. Yeah, I had a very um, touching experience. Um, we share a lot together and enjoy it. Okay. What's the best part of being a husband? Um, caring from caring for one another and um, helping out with the chores and so so forth. Yeah. What chores does he help out with? Well, he could buy the rice. <laughs> <laughs> he helps me with the baby most of all. And then came the finale, the night it all came down to when the winners of a $3 million wedding was declared. And what better night to make one couple very happy but on Valentine's night.
This was the final round of the competition, and the couples gathered at an exquisite dinner at the Duke Lodge, where they had a final shot at impressing the judges. The couples were treated to a dance by the winners of the 2015 race to the altar, Winston and Natasha Waddle. And then it was time for the couples to showcase their talent.
life. To motivate, elevate, appreciate, cultivate, even to captivate. The sun leads the moon. A king leads his queen. A prince leads his princess. Day leads night. So tonight, let me introduce, showcase my wife. Nestlin and Kelman.
The couples also had to answer a question about each other, and they were questioned by the judges. What is Karen's favorite food? Me. Well, let's go. What's your favorite dish? You think they got bacchanal tonight? Yes, probably bacchanal. Bacchanal, you sure? Let me see what he got on your paper. And the man, this man really knows so many, you know. This man says, cook up rice. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Good night, Clay. So the question is, what is the one thing that Malisha does not like to do? one thing you don't like to do? To be honest, I don't like to be put on the spot. Um, let's say you have to speak in person. I think Chris is the person that the most is speaking to me because I'm the person that always speaks the back seat to the front row. What is that one thing? Stand and tell us. What is that one thing you think your wife-to-be does not like to do? I gotta justify it, you know, because it's more wretched. You better get it right. Can't tell me when they're on the paper, you know. I could read. Um, she don't like cleaning. What? <laughs> um, I, I would like to know um, how how did you guys meet, and um, what do you think that has um, you, you know um, lit the, the, the spark between you and keep the chemistry um, as strong as it. As I saw it in, in, in the song just now. Let's go. Well, it was for um, her love for God. Because coming from a Christian background, I really wanted someone who has that love for God. And so he displayed that. So that's what captured my attention. Wonderful. Mona Lisa. I want you to read to us what you have on this page. Okay. Um, we met. We met through a friend via social media, BBM. Yeah. And I was in love with the Lord Jesus Christ, and so Stephen fell in love with me. Oh. Right. <laughs> My question to you, Troy. Um, what would you say is Karen's um, dream vacation? What would you, what's your dream vacation? What would your dream vacation be? Well, a vacation with never really, it doesn't matter where I am, as long as I'm with our kids in Detroit, it can be a dream anywhere, especially Oh, put your hands together, ladies. That's a beautiful answer. Good. Now, Troy, you think you got the answer correct? Yes. You did? Let me see on the paper. Read it for us. Always want to be with our kids. Always want to be with our kids. That's the correct answer, ladies and gentlemen. All right, put your hands together for couple number four. It was then time for the judges to tally their scores and announce the winner. I know that we have we've been out. We said we're going to announce it in a while. We've been in there, the deliberations, the tallying of votes. And so we want persons to know that uh, the three categories of which persons uh, win affordability, uh, we have uh, am ambassadorship, and also we have chemistry. And of course, we have uh, Captain Gavai in the house. If you can put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for our Chief Executive Officer, Captain Gerald Gavai. There were also comments by the three previous couples to win the race to the altar. Um, I could remember this night clearly because um, I was the one that fainted. Now my wife. <laughs> because um, she was practicing her faith, but instead I, I faint when I, when I heard the news. Um, this might bring back a lot of memories. 
you know, the whole competition of race in the art is in. It's fresh in our minds so much that we remember every single detail almost. It's, it's very, very touching and memorable moment for us, and it may last a really a, 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 a lifetime. For me, this moment, it was memorable because we had worked really hard, and it was, we thought that one other couple would have won, but to be called out, I remember my dad doesn't smile a whole lot. And when they said that we won, the most memorable thing besides winning for us was to see my dad smile, the biggest smile I had ever seen on his face. So this moment brings back that wonderful memory to me. Every one of you are winners. And the reason that all of you are winners, first of all, because you were picked from a lineup of 15 other couples. And when we met you with the other couples and we went through that whole process, you had a glow about your relationship. And so whether you're chosen here tonight as a couple that will benefit from the wedding expo, hosting and sponsoring your wedding, together as couples, you guys have demonstrated a nice glow, a glow that made other people who never met you before picked you and shortlisted you. So could I hear the support for couple number one? Somebody got a loud mouth over there. Could I hear it for couple number two? Could I hear it for couple number three? And could I hear it for couple number four? So ladies and gentlemen, the decision is final. The couple who will be the ambassadors for Wedding Expo for 2016 and for 17. This couple number three. The lucky couple won a wedding worth $3 million, a honeymoon in Aruba, a night at Splashman's Resort, and rings by King's Jewelry World, among other prizes.